Welcome everybody to the launch of We Week. Uh, my name is Ariel Pese, and I'm I'm glad to be here in front of you. I'm the owner of La Empanada. I'm originally from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Wow, I like I like the silence. I feel better now. Yes, and I really appreciate We Week with their help. I I started my business last year in Madison, Wisconsin. And I hope you can enjoy the spinach and three cheeses empanadas. We're gonna we're gonna serve you guys. Bienvenidos. Welcome. My name is Maritza Paz and I am owner and chef of Paz Restaurant, Peruvian cuisine. And I invite us for visit me in 939 West National Avenue. Enjoy my, my empanadas too. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the Wibbick Luncheon. My name is Jesse Canazaro and I am an owner and operator at Milestone Plumbing. This year we paid back our Wibbick loan in full, hired a full time employee, and are on schedule to hire two new employees in the next three months. Thank you all for your support. Hi, my name is Martha Mansky. I am the owner of Martita's Mixers and the creator of Martita's Guiltless Margarita Mix. Uh, my mix is naturally sweetened. You have some on the table. And it um, has natural food coloring and natural flavorings. Thank you so much for your support of Wibbick. Wibbick has been so supportive in many different ways. Classes, networking, connections. So again, thank you for your support. Good afternoon, I'm attorney Latrice Milton. I am the owner of Milton Family Law, which is a divorce firm for women. I uh, have had two good things that happened this year. One is a 40 under 40 award from the Business of Journal, and the second is a feature in Cosmo Magazine. And this all happens with hard work and support, so thanks, Wibbick. Um, and they are asking that we hold our applause until all of us will go through. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Holly and I'm with Reborn Wellness. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. That's what I look like in corporate America. Um, I was diagnosed with seven illnesses through our loan from Wibbick. We now have over six practitioners under our roof in downtown Waukesha. We actually teach people how to care for their temples, eating natural foods, getting off multiple medications, and we are now covered by FSA, HSA, and insurance. Thank you, Wibbick, for your support, and thank you all of you for your support of Wibbick. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Lakeisha King. I'm short, sorry. Um, <laughs> I own and operate Prestige Adult Daycare Center. We're off of 76 and Brown Deer Road. Um, Wibbick did provide funding for our facility. We offer bathing, medication administration. Please send any family members or loved ones that you have that you may want to participate in adult daycare services with. Thank you. Hi, my name is Patty. I actually work with Holly, who you just recently heard from. I do spray tans and body wraps with her. I've been doing that for seven years now. Um, I look forward to working with uh, Premier Bride magazines that we now will be, um, we will have an ad with them. Um, I appreciate all the support I get from Holly as, as well as thank you, Wibbick, for your support. Hello, my name is Matt Brugman, one of three co-founders of Flux Mopeds, which is a dealer distributor of 100% electric mopeds. We are located on Willie Street in Madison. And thanks to years of Wibbeck help, we just opened in September. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dave Shanklin. I'm the owner of Dave's famous pickles, peppers, and jams. Not famous, Dave. He's famous. I'm not. <laughs> and uh, thank you to Wibbeck and the city of West Dallas for your support and everybody else's support of Wibbeck. Thank you. Hi, my name is Viola Tucker. I'm the Academy Administrator of Tucker's Truck Driving Academy. And this is my husband, Melvin Tucker, who's the instructor for Tucker's Truck Driving Academy. Thank you, everybody, and then thank you, Wibbick, for your support. We just opened our doors yesterday. <laughs> and we thank offer a four-week course for truck drivers, for new truck drivers, and the trucking industry is, has a shortage of drivers, so if you know anybody, and wants to learn how to drive a truck, 
Now Come. enrolling. Now enrolling. Thank you, Whitney, for your Whitney. support. Thank I you. appreciate it. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angelita Swims. My name is Willie Swims. Owner of WNA Oriental Boutique and Furniture, located in 7516 West Appleton Avenue. We've been in business for three years, and thanks to Wibbeck, we are able to grow our business. Thank you. Thank you, Wibbeck. Hi, I'm Tamara Mugerauer from Tamara the Cake Guru in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. With the help of Wibbeck, we were able to expand our location last year. Um, and in one year, we've grown from four employees to 25 employees. Um, we have over 200 cupcake flavors, and we have close to, close to 13,000 Facebook fans. You can find us, hashtag under the polka dots. Thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Tamara Washington with Options Salon and Spa. We're a full service multicultural salon and spa. This is part of our staff there. Uh, we've been in business now going on eight years, thanks to Wibbick. Um, so thank you Wibbick for your support and thank you all for the support of Wibbick. Hello, I'm Michelle Trotter of Trotter Industries. This is my husband. We've been in business for 18 years and i like to thank Wibic for all of their support. With uh, their support, we were able to get um, a grant for a computer, another grant for the business, a grant for the accounting. So I know without accounting, every business would fail, and they were really good in coaching us along the way with our accounting skills and the business. And on behalf of Wibbick, I'd like to thank you for your investments and your, you know, your investment towards us and allowing us to be able to continue on. For so long, we went without going to any banks or anything, borrowing any money. We was just basically trying to be ingenuity in some of the things that we're doing. But through the help of Wibbick, we've been able to expand our business and thank you for the opportunity for the upcoming future for our businesses. Hi, I'm Brandon, owner of Warriors of Fitness and lead trainer. Um, because of Wibbick on Friday, we were able to be open for one year, so we just had our birthday. So that uh, was great. Appreciate everything. We've learned so much from classes, um, meeting other Wibbick clients that can pool their resources as well with us. So at Warriors of Fitness, we like to change you, and we also want to change the face of fitness. So we're here for a year. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jennifer Dodger. I'm the owner and designer of Rockify Baby. I developed these styling socks, which are American-made and eco-friendly for kids. And thanks to Wibbick, not only were we able to retain American jobs, but we've been able to create them. Thank you. Hi, my name is Valerie Tatum. I am with Divine Creations. We provide accessories for women, handbags, statement pieces like the one I have on. Wibbick has been a great supporter. This is my second venture, and they've been along with me the entire journey. So again, thank you, Wibbick, and thank you for your support. Hello, I am Kristen Johnstone Buer. And I'm Scott Buer, and we are Bolzano Artisan Meats. Um, it was four and a half years ago that our first loan from Wibbick got us started to create our uh, unique company here in Wisconsin, and more recent funding from Wibbick allowed us to expand, so we're now at over 100 stores and restaurants all across Wisconsin, so thank you. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. My name is Jenny Cheria Gardner, and I'm the owner and designer of Uniquely Yours Events and Designs, where we will create your unique event on your unique budget. I've been a client of Wibbick for three years, and I have to say that Wibbick, without you, I would not be standing here, owning a business, living a dream that so few get to live. You are a wonderful support for anyone who has a dream, woman or man, and we thank you so much for all that you do to support us. Thank you. Greetings, uh, I'm Alan Christian. I'm a partner at Fairtrade for All. Uh, we have been in business for seven years, and like five years ago, we got a loan from Webeck and really helps us uh, really kick in our business. Right now, we have uh, about four employees, and when I mean by employees, I mean locally people who are working with us, but globally, we actually help hundreds of artisans in 40 countries food on their table. 
And if you are curious to know how we do that as a small shop, the only way, please come to our shop on 88 and North Avenue in Wawatosa, and you will see. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Angie. I am the top nanny of Shenanigans Child Care Center. Thank you to Wibig and my wonderful husband. I was able to expand from simply servicing the Sun Prairie area to now also servicing Madison. Oh, I'm sorry, servicing Milwaukee. <laughs> I thank you very much for your support. If it was not for Wibig, I would not have been able to expand and make my dreams come true of owning a group daycare center. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Slava, and this is my wife, Vera. We are founders of Strong Microbials Incorporated. We are an active microbial company that manufactures products for sustainable agriculture. We use natural bacteria to make agriculture more sustainable and profitable. That's why we're naturally positioned for job growth in our home Milwaukee. Thank you, Webeck, for your support. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bella Runta. My business is Bella Bella. We specialize in gym to street, high-end t-shirts, tanks for men, women, and children. What makes our brand unique is that I hand draw all the designs that are decorated. And I just thought I would show you because it's hard to describe, but they're all inspired by East Indian henna, which is my heritage. So each design is hand drawn by me and then locally printed by a local uh, printer, both on for artwork and t-shirts. And um, I'm a new client to Wibic, but they've been immensely helpful in sort of helping me figure out how to take my business, what I've already grown, to the next level. So thank you. Hi, my name is Rosalind Anderson, and the name of my company is called Standard of Excellence Education and Training Center. And I would like to first thank Wibic for being my shoulder to cry on. <laughs> Uh, and, and my counselor. So I definitely want to thank them for all the resources they, that they are providing for me. Um, and I do have the winner of the CPR class, and her name is a Regina Flares of MPS. So please make sure that you see me for your free CPR class. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Lauren Schultz. This is my husband, Steve Schultz. We're the owners of Purple Door Ice Cream. Um, Along with taking some great business classes um, through Wibic, two and a half years ago, they also um, gave us our first loan to start our business. Mm -hmm. And since then, we've gone from two employees to five. We've expanded into Chicago and are now in 45 grocery stores and 31 restaurants. And starting next year, we are opening our, the goal we've always been going for, and that's opening our, our own ice cream shop uh, in Walker's Point. So thank you, Wibic, and thank you for supporting Wibic. They're a tremendous asset to this community. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Anna with Wisconian Delectables. Some of you have tried my tasty chips, so you know they taste good. Some of you are carrying them home with you. The other thing you may not have heard is that I have a feel-good chip as well. I started my business, I don't have a store. I started at Harbor Market in Kenosha. I now work with developmentally disabled at the Kenosha Achievement Center. So we do good when you purchase your chips, we help build a playground for the developmentally disabled. Please see me afterwards, thank you. Hi, my name is Enrique Alvarado. I'm on the graphic designer at Great Impressions, owned by Carolyn Walker. She is unfortunately unable to be here, um, but a little bit about the place. Um, we're a graphics and printing company uh, on 54th and Burley. Come on by. We can help your business look great. Thanks. Hi, I'm Carolyn Weber. And I'm Tristan Klein, and we're the owners of Coast Inn Bikes, a bike shop here <laughs> in Walkers Point, Wisconsin. Uh, um, we're going to be moving to Second Street in a month and joining all the Second Street businesses. We opened about six months ago thanks to classes and funding from Wibic, and we hired our first employee this summer. Okay. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Clarence. This is April Wilkes, but um, she's from the Porty Palace. And unfortunately, she has a little bit of laryngitis. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to speak for her, OK? Uh, so, she says to the classes offered at Wibic and the small business loan she's received, right? Yeah. The Party Palace has been able to grow and market the Party Palace even more than before. Thank you, Wibic, for your support. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Amber Casper. I'm the owner and artist at All of You Photography. I'm a fine art portrait boutique who used to run out of my home since, Mar or since July of 2007. We relocated here last year and Wibbick helped me move my studio from my living room to a retail space and I hope to have one to two employees in the next year. Thank you. Hi, my name is Carolyn Carlson and this is my daughter Lindsay Carlson. Uh, we are opening a new retail store called Findig in Shorewood. Uh, we focus on men and women's clothing and accessories uh, focused on responsible fashion. We just want to thank Wibbick for the opportunity and the support they've given us. Without them, we would not be able to make this dream a reality. So thank you. Hi, there's a lot of people looking for jobs and a lot of companies looking for great talent. The Good Jobs helps companies quantify their company culture. We're the first ever company culture directory. We launched in January. We're located in the third ward. We have about 40 customers and just signed Zappos, Comcast, and a spinoff of Pitney Bowes. So I hope that if you're an employer, you come and visit us. And if you're a job seeker looking for good employers, you'll come and visit us and see the culture directory. Thanks. Good afternoon, my name is Lali Ramos, and along with my husband, Nicholas, we own and operate Antigua Latin Restaurant and Catering. Thanks to the support of Wibic and the city of West Dallas, we've been in business for seven and a half years now, and we continue to expand our brand and our product services. Thank you for your support. Hi, my name is Jennifer Anderson. I own Treasure Closet Online Clothing Boutique. Um, I've been in business since April, and our website launched this July. I have one of the pieces on right now. We offer a variety of different styles, ranging from sizes small to 3X, depending on the specific piece. Um, Wibbick has been an exceptional part of my life. I'm so blessed to have or be a part of this program. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be, you know, owning my own business. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for all the resources. I've been really taking advantage of all the classes that they've offered to you know, become a better businesswoman, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Hi, I'm Glenn Polinski. I'm founder and president of a company called Modern Movement. We create patented products that help people improve their balance, and through uh, Wibbix support, we launched our product in August of this year, and so far we've hired three new employees. Thank you. Good afternoon, Bill Fuchs with Logical Green Solutions. We're the LED lighting experts. You can see our booth out there. It's the one that's sort of dim. Um, we uh, got our first round of capitalization through Wibbick and WCDC. We've also participated in sponsored retail rally, which was a great networking event. Two exciting things we have coming up is we're adding and expanding our sales force as we grow from Southeast Wisconsin to nationwide. Check us out on, on Milwaukee, uh, MilwaukeeJobs.com. And the other thing is we have a uh, no money down financing program where you don't have any money out of pocket and you can actually make money with LED lighting. See us to save, save time, money, and the environment. Thank you. I'm Jeff Dadka with It's My Party Cakery. And I'm Judy Dadka. We're the proud owners of It's My Party Cakery, the perfect blend of cake and art. Um, without Wibbick, I wouldn't have been able to open my store and start my dream. Thank you, Wibbick. Hello, I'm Dia Trow with Nailani Services. Nilani builds brands, we build teams, and we build success. And because of Wibbick, we are now eight members strong, moved into a new location, and serving a number of our Wibbick clients as well as others throughout Southeast Wisconsin. We thank you for all of you that are out there that have been supporters of Wibbick. Keep giving because we love to give back. Thanks. My name is Bowen Dornbrook with Central Greens Aquaponics. I'm one of the many partners of our uh, local aquaponic farm, we do things organically, and we are one of the few year-round producers in an area that is forced to import much of their local food supply. Um, thanks to Wibic, we are able to expand our production and increase our, our product line to microgreens, culinary herbs, and other lettuce varieties. Thank you, Thank you Wibic. Thanks, Wibic. My name is Jim Gaylord, co-owner of Pyramid Electric. We do electrical construction, maintenance and repair on buildings and residences in metropolitan Milwaukee area and surrounding. And I want to thank Wibbick for helping us become a better business and helping us build capacity to do larger projects. Thank you all for your support. Hi, I'm Diana and this is my daughter Rebecca. We are Diana and Daughters. Uh, we make a product called Augusta's Antipasto, named after my grandma Augusta. It's an old world Italian family recipe, and we use local farmers to source our ingredients. We'd like to thank Wibbick. 
for the help with the connections, the support and encouragement, and for media. And also a special thanks to Amber. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tamara Malone with Best Choice Mechanical, which is owned and operated by Isaac Malone. We offer heating, cooling, and plumbing services for the Milwaukee area, and we'd like to thank Wibbick for our first loan. Hi, I'm Kay. And I'm Olivia. And we're KO's Delicious Desserts. We make and sell gourmet cheesecakes. For restaurants, parties, and individuals. Let us do your baking. We're a forkful of goodness. Contact us at KO's, KO's Delicious, Delicious Desserts. Desserts. We're new with Whippick, and we look forward to working with them. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, my name is Tina Beckett, and I am a proud Wibbick client. Uh, thanks to Wibbick, we have been able to make our dream of owning a wellness center, uh, a live one. We have uh, our Massage and Vispa Whitefish Bay location, which is located at 109 East Silver Spring Drive in Whitefish Bay, so write that down so that you can come and visit us. We employ 23 fabulous guest service members and the best therapists and estheticians around. So come visit us and be the body that everybody envies at Massage and V Spa, Whitefish Bay. Good afternoon, beautiful people. My name is Anna Docta. I own Casana Gourmet. I see you there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Wendy, for having me here. We have a space that we offer catering. Primary what we do is organic and uh, everything from scratch, gourmet as possible. We offer also a beautiful cafe and a dining room, and uh, we would love to see you there if it is possible. Maybe next time I can feed you instead of the Paraguarmi. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Katherine Jackson, born and raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and I'm the owner of Protector Pumps, a company I started about two years ago that helps women wear their favorite shoes with confidence and not worry about them getting scuffed up or dirty. So we sell protectors for the heels of shoes and also for the soles. So check us out, protectorpumps.com. I'm very grateful to Wibbick for all they've done to help my business grow and really take this product to a national level. So thank you. Good afternoon, my name is Adelaida Alvarez. I am the owner of Coquettish Nail Salon. Um, I would like to thank God for this opportunity and also to Wibbick uh, for allowing me to dream big and go forward. Um, we specialize in encapsulated nails. Um, the skincare product that I use is secret and you could stop by our table. We have 25% off. Thank you, have a great day. Hi there, my name is Rebecca Scarberry. I own Becky's Blissful Bakery out of Pewaukee, Wisconsin. We specialize in gourmet caramels made with 100% organic ingredients. If you did not get a chance to try our caramels, we have them all out there. Please stop by and try them and say hello to Jamie Sawyer, our newest member of our management team. Keep us in mind for your corporate and client gifts and look for us November 18th in the Williams Sonoma catalog. Thank you, Wibbick. My name is Lynn Keckeisen. I'm the proud owner of Confluence Graphics. We have been in business for almost 20 years and provide graphic design, printing, and mailing services for Wibbick. I started by taking education classes, was paired with several mentors, and eventually volunteered. I thank you for supporting my small business and all of our Wibbick clients. Welcome. Bravo. <laughs> All those clients. And now I would like to welcome you to Wibbick's annual luncheon, celebrating over 25 years of putting dreams to work. To me, that's the best kickoff you can have. Our Wibbick client trade fair, the parade of heroes that you just heard right now, and roughly 800 strong in the room today, supporting the impact of small business in the state of Wisconsin. I hope you enjoyed eating those hot empanadas. I'm gonna have one afterwards. I didn't wanna have green in my teeth when I was talking here. But um, they're fabulous, so I hope you enjoy them. I'm Wendy Bauman, I'm Wibbick's president and CVO, and I'm here with John Keynes, Wibbick's vice president of finance and business services. Thank you, Wendy. We're both, we are both thrilled to be here with you today, as well as our 
to be your initial MCs. And you'll see here more about our speakers later on through the program. We'd also like to announce our sponsors, our national and local partners, and our media sponsors for this year's lunch and event as well. They're all listed on your agendas that you should have at your tables and also recognized again and also throughout the screens through our luncheon today as well. And once again, thank you for your support. We also want to give special thanks today to our lead sponsor, PNC Bank. We also thank the many clients we have here today. I think you've noticed and you saw here a little bit a couple minutes ago, our parade of heroes. And the most important reason, our clients, is why we're here today. Clients, I want to say one thing to you. You are our heroes. Not just with your vision, but also with the value you add and the impact in the communities with the things you do, but also the jobs that you also create as well. And throughout, particularly Wisconsin. And for that, we want to thank you. It's also my honor, I want to also say th again thanks and acknowledge our staff, as well as our board of directors. And I also want to extend a huge thank you to the older folks that helped serve with us as well. Our WIDIC Loan Committee, our Audit and Finance Committee, and our other four advisory councils that we have. South Central, Southeast, West Allis, and our rural en environments as well. And you, again, we'll continue to see them on our screens as well. Their work, their dedication, and their support really make things happen. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, I know Wendy wants to share a few comments about Wibix Impact. Again, I want to thank you again for attending. Thank you, John. So if I could have everyone's attention just for a moment, and then we're going to enjoy the meal right after this first part of the program. I say that every year, so it's like, don't eat right now, and then you can. I have three messages I want to share with the 800 in the room. The first one is inequity. You are all here in part because you do not believe in inequity. And you know that Wibbick for over 25 years has worked to advance economic equity for the many. Our foremothers and our forefathers didn't create a nation of opportunity for some, they created a nation of opportunity for all. And did you know that in 1988, just 25 years ago, the Women's Business Ownership Act was passed. This law extended gender equity of access of capital to the original law of Equal Credit Opportunity Act in 1974. It included business credit. So just think, 25 years ago, women could not obtain business credit in their own name. Wibbe cares about all entrepreneurs and remains targeted in providing equal opportunity of resources. That quality business and financial education <laughs> coupled with access to fair and responsible capital. This year alone has been Wibbe's strongest year ever. We've already reached our set goals. Through the beginning or through the end of October, we've already closed over $4 million in loans to over 100 businesses in our state. And by year, and we have two more months to go. And by year's end, we'll have served over 3,500 clients and offering them and instilling a sense of hope and opportunity. It is not about justice for some. It's about justice for all. And justice begins with opportunity for all. My second point is capital. Every day, there's an estimated 8,000 business credits that are denied loans from financial institutions. And we're interested in them, at least the ones in Wisconsin. We're about saying yes, and uh, say yes to Wibbeck, don't say no. We work hard at getting our clients' loan applications to yes. We look past bankruptcies and colorful credit histories to viable business ideas and the capacity to carry out those viable business ideas. But we do need our own financing too. The oxygen of community economic development is financing. I remember years ago when a policymaker put Wibbeck in the state budget for the first time. We were thrilled, we were doing the dance, we were jumping up and down. Three years later, he asked me, what else can I do? And I said, it's very simple, sir. You just need to add a zero to that line item. <laughs> when I became president of Wibbeck almost 20 years ago, our loan portfolio was less than 150,000, and we've added zeros onto that loan portfolio and growing. Our investors, municipalities, financial institutions, faith-based organizations, foundations, and now accredited individual investors have all stepped up. This year alone, we've had the largest investments ever with new investments from PNC Bank and Bank of America without even a presence in Wisconsin, Bank of America, both at half a million. 
BMO Harris came in at a combined 700,000, and just a week and a half ago, we got the great news from Northern Trust. They added a zero on their first investments of 100,000, and we have our first investment in Wibbeck of a million dollars. And without money, it is hard to advance mission. And Wibbeck has prized itself on its over 25-year history of paying every investor back and on time. So if you are out there and you want to add a zero, if you're a accredited investor, or you want to be, and are interested in investing, please reach out to us. It's about aligning capital with justice. The third and most important are clients. They are our local heroes. In urban cities and in rural communities, home-based businesses and manufacturing, our clients are employing themselves and others. They are creating jobs at a positive pace. Did you know that 85% of all the businesses in the state of Wisconsin are micro-businesses? And they employ over 30% of our state citizens. So reach out to them and make a difference. Today, during our luncheon meal, you'll have the opportunity to go back to your offices or your homes with some of our Wibbeck business products. Now, I'm not saying that floral centerpieces where you pick up the cup and have a little polka dot and you get to take that floral piece home is boring, but don't you think it's a lot more fun to argue and debate over the luncheon meal about guiltless margarita mix? about coffee with a conscience, organic, fair trade, fairly <laughs> traded coffee, now with two convenient locations, our new one at the 411 building and our other one at Schlitz Park. Or ladies for your fancy shoes, the Protect Your Pumps that was actually debuted just a month ago on the Today Show. And for those couple of cookies that look like this in the package, do not eat them because they're for your dog or your favorite pooch, okay? <laughs> They look good enough to eat, from Canine Nibble in Kenosha. <laughs> so buy from these clients, contract them, pass their names on. Wibbeck is not about anti-big box, but we're about pro-little box. Think about it, move on your thoughts, turn to them in purchasing and procurement. We've updated our website with easy links so you can turn to them. And you'll hear from our speaker soon, after our lunch in Bob Harris, about the impact of micro-businesses worldwide. Bob stumbled upon microcredit just a few small, short years ago. He saw two worlds, those of the haves and those of the have-nots. And then he stumbled upon Kiva, a global microlender, which Wibbeck has been approved as a trustee. And you'll hear about that in the uh, months to come in Wibbeck's role with Kiva. The impact of microcredit here and in our nation is huge. And I leave you with this thought. If the businesses here today would gain in additional sales, and if just one in three of the micro-businesses in the state of Wisconsin, if one in three of the micro-businesses in our nation would employ one more individual, our country and our state would be at full employment. And you can make a difference. So now I leave you with a brief video that talks about the impact, about the one in three role, and please enjoy your luncheon. Thank you. Did you know that about 90% of all U.S. businesses are micro-businesses? That's small businesses with five or fewer employees, the ones you see on Main Street in your communities every day, like your local repair shop, tailor, and flower shop. These businesses are at the heart of America's economic recovery and generate approximately $4.87 trillion annually for the U.S. economy, allowing their owners to accumulate a median net worth of almost 2.5 times higher than non-business owners. We can invest in job creation through micro-businesses. In fact, if just one in three Main Street micro-businesses hired a single employee, the U.S. would be at full employment. So how do we grow Main Street? Through micro-business development organizations that help entrepreneurs get access to capital and resources so Main Street can start, grow, and hire. Main Street micro-businesses can't stand without the help of micro-business development organizations or the entrepreneurs who keep Main Street beating strong. They're both at the heart of the One in Three campaign. The campaign goals are simple. Reach one million entrepreneurs with capital and services and create 500,000 jobs. The results? An improved awareness of the power of micro-business as a vital agent for job creation, community stability, and growth. 
Get involved now by joining the One in Three Alliance and taking the One in Three Pledge to become a microbusiness champion, invest in Main Street by spending your dollars with microbusinesses, and support advocacy efforts to help Main Street. Spread the word about the One in Three campaign. Together, we can help Main Street and spread the power of One in Three. For more information, go to www.1in3.biz. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome back. We truly hope you enjoyed our luncheon meal. And now, we resume our program with a special greeting from a previous Wibbeck keynote speaker, B. Smith and her husband and business partner, Dan Gaspi, who are making a difference in their own right. I'm B. Smith. And I'm Dan Gaspi, and we're the... Husband and wife team at B. Smith Enterprises. Yes, indeed. I met many of you when I was WWBIC's luncheon keynote for the 20th anniversary, and now you're celebrating over 25 years of putting dreams to work. Congratulations. Congratulations, guys. I understand what it takes to run a business. We own restaurants, design more than 300 products for Bed Bath & Beyond, and have a weekly radio show on Sirius XM. That's the B. Smith and Thank You Dan show, by the way. <laughs> we know the demands, the hours, the financing, and also the rewards of creating those local jobs. That make up the local fabric of communities that are really impacting the lives of everyone on an economic and lifestyle basis. We send our best salute all the entrepreneurs and business owners in the room and share thanks and gratitude to the many good people and organizations that provide support to WWBICs each day. Have a great show. Good afternoon. I'm Amy Poehler, and this is Lisa uh, Tina Fay. Oh, wrong, wrong script. Wrong, wrong script. script. Sorry, sorry. That's not the Emmys. Sorry, sorry. Um, good afternoon. My name is Julianne Jatsak, and I'm vice president of the Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative, and I serve currently in the role of Impact Initiatives. And with me today is Mara Henningsen, not Tina Fey, um, who is our vice president of client programs and services. Um, before we hear from Bob Harris, our featured keynote, we would like to acknowledge the many VIPs that are with us today. They have been listed on the screen throughout the luncheon, and they are throughout the room. We thank these elected officials and policymakers from our nation, our state, our counties, and our cities for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the unique luncheon selections from some of our fantastic Wibbit clients as well as from Seth Vanderlyn, Potawatomi's award-winning chef. This meal was created especially for you, and it includes empanadas from Wibbit clients La Empanada in Madison and Chef Paz in West Dallas, delicious blueberry jam accompaniment to the rolls from Dave's famous pickles, peppers and jams, and lemon bliss for dessert, featuring lemon bars from Miss Cupcake in Shorewood, lemon cheesecake from Sweet Eats Traditions in Racine, and lemon dream cupcakes from Tamar's Bakery in Oshkosh. Wibbick always puts our clients front and center. Additionally, we feature Wibbick's social business venture, Coffee with a Conscience, which serves all organically fairly traded coffee. The layout and design of Wibbick's luncheon invitation and materials is again this year brought to you by Milwaukee's Confluence Graphics. Audiovisual services today for this event are provided by the talented women's business enterprise of Logan Productions. Do note these businesses that are listed on your tables and in our presentation on the screens. Please remember them, buy from them, use their services. As we say at Wibbeck, they may call it micro, but the impact is macro. Now to introduce our keynote speaker, our two people that are very near and dear to Wibbeck. First is um, Nikwana Edwards, followed by Pablo Fontan. Um, 
Naquana is our 128th homeowner through our Make Your Money Talk program, and Pablo Fontan is owner of Carpe Noche Salon. Well, good afternoon, everyone. As they previously stated, my name is Naquana Edwards. And I've been given approximately three minutes to speak with you, so I will not be before you long at all. Yes, I formerly lived at West Lawn Housing Authority. I utilized resources made available through the Home Ownership Program, as well as through the Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative Make Your Money Talk Program. And on July 16, 2013, approximately three and a half months ago, I became a homeowner. I accepted the offer to come here today for two reasons. One, to say thank you. And two, to bring awareness and action to do what we can while we can. A brief snapshot of myself. I graduated from the suburban school system. I became a pre-med student. I joined the United States Army and became a combat medic. I was a correctional officer at the House of Correction running a dorm of 70 male inmates. I also worked at a Fortune 100 company and a Fortune 500 company in downtown Milwaukee where I became a trainer while building up my 401k and investing. And that's just to name a few. And then life took a turn. In a nine month time period, I lost my stepdad to cancer. I experienced having to live with the decision of having an abortion. I lost my job. And two weeks later, I was in the room with my mom, Diane Marie, at St. Joseph Hospital as she took her last breath. And with not much fight left in me, I found myself in an extremely abusive situation. Now, with no job, I soon depleted my 401k and savings. After a couple of years of running and fighting for my life, I called out to God and turned my life over. It was then that the doors of the Milwaukee Rescue Mission opened to myself and my daughter and embraced us with God's love, where we stayed for over a year in the Fresh Start program. There I learned about and applied for the low-income housing. Sometime later, I prepared myself to live at West Lawn. And yes, I have to say I prepared myself because at the time, my life wasn't on that avenue. I was a pre-med student. I, I worked at a major company. I wasn't so uh, familiar with low-income housing. And I know the, the negative stigma that it brought. However, I could not have been any more wrong. Nine months after moving in, I completed and obtained a college degree in education, where I now serve for the Milwaukee Public School System. I began, thank you. I began taking more concrete steps to home ownership and learned about the Make Your Money Talk program through WIBIC and opened an IDA account with the assistance and the support of Amber and Kwanzaa Morgan. I took off of work today without pay as my way of giving back and to humbly say thank you. Thank you to the Milwaukee Rescue Mission Fresh Start Program and all that support it. Thank you to our city that invests in such renovations as West Lawn Housing Authority, which has been proven here to be an investment in return. Thank you to West Lawn also that cares for the needs as well as the rent assistance program as they extend such avenues to home ownership. Thank you 
to Wisconsin Women's Business Initiative and the Money and the Make Your Money Talk program. And on a more post-personal note, to my brother Rob, who is who is also a entrepreneur and owner of Ace Barber and Cosmetology, located off of Titonia and Congress, <laughs> for all of his financial support and even up to and including today watching my two-year-old son so I didn't have to spend the time taking him to daycare. Now to conclude, please, if there's ever a time when we are looking down on someone I hope it is to help lift them up. We never know what tomorrow may bring, no matter how prepared we think that we are. It may be a time, even old age, when we may need someone to help lift us. It is easy to look down when you are up, but not so easy to look up when you are down. So again, thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Pablo Rafael Fontan. I'm a 31-year uh, veteran. I'm still in the Army. And um, on November 2nd, I came back from military leave, and um, my job was eliminated. And um, it was very, I felt very degraded. It was very hard, depressing. And the week after, my son lost his job. So I'm like, okay, we can probably share more time together. Week three, uh, my daughter-in-law comes running to me and says, Dad, they're closing the salon. So I was upset, and I said to my wife, kiddingly, I'm going to buy the salon. And my wife said, that's a good idea. <laughs> I do not cut hair, and I do not color. Okay? <laughs> So, um, as t time was going on, I, I was going to school, I doubled on my classes to get my MBA in Business Administration and Human Resources. I completed my, my school, but meanwhile, I had, um, had all the plans and everything was working well, but I was missing money. So I had a friend of mine I went to a bank, and the bank explained to me, you know, you're a new business, and you're not, um, you're starting. So I'm going to give you this uh, name of this organization, and it's uh, Women's, Wisconsin Women's. And he gave me Wibic, and I'm like, I'm a guy, I'm not a woman, you know, so what's the problem? So he explained to me, they help everybody. So I'm like, okay. So I put the name in the back pocket, and I had drill that weekend. I went to Fort McCoy. And I spoke to a friend of mine, because I was talking about security. And he says, um, so I'm Fontan, did you try Wibic? And I'm like, Wibic? Second time I hear that name. And he says, yeah, they help out. So I'm like, OK, that's fine. So two times. So I get back to McCoy. I have to uh, fly out to Fort Bragg. And there's a soldier that lives in Wisconsin. And he tells me, oh, my uncle's trying to open up. He's opening a business, and he got a lot of help from Wibbick. I'm like, Wibbick? So here's that name again. So I decide to, I get home, I tell my wife about Wibbick, and she says, cool. So I picked up the phone, I call, and Benny Perez from Wibbick answered the phone. And I said, hey, this is Pablo Fontan, and... Wibbick has been, you know, in less than a week, I've heard your name three times, and this is what I'm planning on doing. And he says, just one second, sir. What's your last name? Fontan. So, said, did your son go to a Spanish merchant school? 
And I'm like thinking, I don't know if this is gonna be good or bad. <laughs> so I said, yes. He, he, he used to go, oh, I remember him, Rafi Fantien. We were best friends. So I'm like, okay, thank God. <laughs> so he's, he started talking to me and I felt like, wow, this is four times in a week, Wibig. So I, I started talking to, to Benny's and he was helping me out. Everybody, I would go to Wibig to get information. And then we had a talk in front of about 25 people. They just told me it was about 10 to 15. So we get to the room, I have the manager with me and we talk about our business. And I'm nervous to see, that we, are we gonna be okay? Are we not gonna be okay? I think within 25 minutes on my way home, we get the call that the loan was approved. So we started working on the salon. On February 2nd, we were able to get in, clean it out. And I had a carpenter who says to me, Pablo, do you have a plan? And I said, no, I'm just gonna pretend that I'm in combat and this is the way I'm gonna do this. So this is, I want you to do this, 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 and this. Did you understand? Yes, that's my plan. <laughs> so it, he got it all together and although we opened, we, we started work in February 2nd, we were open for business February 12th. Okay, so, and I have, I started with two stylists and um, I'm up to five, and there's one more that wants to come and join. So business is going good. And I also, I finished my school in July, got my MBA. The school hired me to get more um, students, uh, Hispanics and soldiers. And I did for one month because then I got called from another organization that were looking for a bilingual uh, customer service uh, manager. So I started September 23rd, so everything is going back to uh, looking better. And um, like was mentioned before, you know, it's, it's easy to look from the top to bottom, but it's very difficult to look when you're down up. And thank to all of you, to Benny, and Lynn Crikson, who always comes in every month, we have a meeting, and she looks at everything, and she comes up with ideas. I use her ideas, and I do much better. And then we get the next month, so I get very excited when I know that uh, they're coming, Webick is coming to visit, to talk to me, and we have a little meeting. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you to all of you, and to Webick, because it's, you know, it's like a life raft in the ocean. It's your, 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 your savior. And um, I promise from this point on that I'm going to let everybody know that's going to open a business that Wibic is not only for women's, <laughs> it's for everybody. And um, they are there to support you every, every step of the way. So thank you. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our keynote presenter today, Mr. Bob Harris. Bob truly demonstrates one person making a different turn, turning his opportunity into impact. Through the vehicle of micro lending, please help me welcome Mr. Bob Harris. Hey, uh, before I get started, um, boy, how do I follow that? I mean, I, I just want to take a second and, and acknowledge this, this, whole, this, this whole event, the, the, the hope and the strength and the courage and the joy that's come across this stage. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just honored as heck to, to, to be here, and I have to say Wibic is one of the most uh, impressive organizations I've ever come in contact with. And I hope that'll mean a little more as I show you some stuff in my travels. I have to do some housekeeping here up at the podium. Um, my computer that has a bunch of photographs that I'm going to share with you has, as people have been coming up here, the computer has gotten buried in the back of the podium. There it is. All right. So we can... All right. And everybody hear me okay? Is my mic on? Are we good? All right. And, oh, oh I got to put my password in. Everybody close your eyes. All right. And there we are. Okay. Um, if we can get the uh, images up on the screen. 
That'll be awesome. Now, the reason I'm here is I'm the author of a book that you might have seen out there, you might have heard of, called The International Bank of Bob. Um, I am not a banker. I'm not a wealthy guy. I'm working class. Uh, I'm a uh, work girl. My dad worked at General Motors for 37 years in a plant. Uh, my mom worked in a, a Newberry's, a five and dime that I don't think doesn't even exist anymore. Um, but I lucked into the opportunity to meet clients who had their businesses microfinanced all over the world in Kenya, in Nicaragua, uh, let's see, that's uh, Rwanda, Bosnia, Philippines, uh, Peru, Lebanon, on and on and on. And this all happened, I mean, the whole question of today is can one person make a difference? I don't claim that I have, I really don't. I just put some money in and then people changed their own lives. They did their own work. I just greased the wheels a little with a tiny bit of money here and there, that's it. Um, but I want to show you the differences that people are making all over the world and kind of where Wibic fits into this large microfinance movement that's happening all over the planet that's frankly incredible and super cool. Um, so, and the way I fell into it, and I really did fall into it, is I've had a bunch of different jobs over my life, one of which was I lucked into a job as a luxury travel writer for a while, which was a good gig. Uh, <laughs> my job, my job was to go to really fancy hotels and get paid to write articles saying, yes, the beds are nice. That was my job. I wrote articles like Europe's 50 best hotels. And you know that was a neat gig. That was really fun. And my father worked 37 years in that plant so that I might have a better life somehow. I think dad did good. I honestly do. So I'm going around the planet, I'm getting to see you know, all the stuff that we think of as being the, I slept in castles and you know, saw Iguazu Falls in Brazil and uh, kissed the Blarney Stone and, and walked the Great Wall of China and hiked to Machu Picchu. And this is the actual Casbah in Northern Africa. And yes, I did rock um, <laughs> it. It was really cool. It's kids playing soccer on the beach. It's really awesome if you get the opportunity. So I'm having the time of my life doing this. Uh, the countries in, reds are the, in red are the ones I visited. Uh, as you can see, I suck at Africa. Uh, I don't have Africa down to a science yet, but I've seen some of the planet anyway. And in the process of doing this, I gotta tell you, um, humankind just gets really cool while you're traveling because we seem to have these differences, but pretty soon it just turns into this grand pageant as we bang on our bangers and we strum on our strummers and we hoot on our hooters and we ride on our fun little devices all over the world and we cheer for our sports teams, whatever weird simulated combat that we decide that we want to dive into. And it's, it, it's one giant human family and that gets more and more obvious as you're traveling. Uh, whatever game we do, whatever dances, rituals we may have, they have different cosmetic meanings, but it's all basically the same stuff. And pretty soon you just start seeing that there's like, <sighs> human society is integrating into one giant culture. This is Argentine tango in South Korea, and Egyptian, this is Scottish bagpipes in Egypt, and New Orleans jazz being played on the streets of St. Petersburg, Russia. These are goth kids in Santiago, Chile. It's the coolest thing. This is in Vienna about three weeks ago. This is the square where Adolf Hitler gave a speech celebrating the annexation of Austria into the Nazi empire. And that's a bunch of Chinese senior citizens doing Tai Chi in that very spot. <laughs> Hitler did not see that coming. <laughs> the world is working itself out right before our eyes and at light speed. And just this morning, I gotta show like how rapidly the world is interconnecting. One of the most dangerous parts of the world, uh, the Eastern Congo, one of the few places I will not visit. Uh, the Eastern Congo is an area where more people die every day in the aftermath of its wars than in all of the hot wars everywhere in the entire world, and most of us never even hear about it. And today, one of the major insurgencies, M23, laid down their rifles, and we found out because they announced it on their Facebook page. <laughs> That's how interconnected we are. That, I did not see that coming. And, I gotta tell you, as I've gone around the world, every single place I've gone, and whatever else I may have to say to you, you hear, see on the news a very scary planet, but every place I've gone, I've been welcomed like an old friend. And maybe the most important thing I can tell you is you, had, you would have too. Uh, this, was, this is Egypt while we were bombing Iraq, and everyone was saying the Middle East is a dangerous place. And as you can see, I was immediately surrounded. <laughs> it is a friendly planet. And this is what you get out of the media. Fresh wave of terror feared. Well, yes, it's terror. You will fear a giant wave of that, yes. But at the end of the day, we finish our labor, we put our arm around someone we love, we take good care of our children. And if we just see each other as people who are just trying to make better lives for our kids, which is what everyone in the entire world is, with very rare exception, we very rapidly turn into a human family. 
And I'm not thinking about this while I'm staying in the Emirates Palace. I'm in Dubai, and I'm getting paid to stay in a $3 billion hotel. And by the way, that's not the Emirates Palace, that's the entrance gate. The actual Emirates Palace is best seen from space. The entrance gate is that small building on the lower right. Uh, if you see that teeny little building down there, uh, they have a mile of private beach. It's a ridiculous place. And meanwhile, who builds this stuff? If you know the economy of the Middle East, it's guys making six bucks a day from East Africa, from South Asia, and my dad worked 37 years for General Motors. And I start going out the front door of these hotels, and I'm trying to figure out how to just work out the difference between rich and poor, and what can one person possibly do? And I was just feeling overwhelmed. I just, like, what can, I, how do I, what do I do? And the reason this guy is doing this job, by the way, where he's from, he'd probably make a buck a day, two bucks a day, three bucks a day, maybe. Now, working six bucks a day, he can save a little money, and even though he won't get home for years, he can wire it home, and his kids can have a better life. So the men working to build these buildings are doing the same work my father did for the exact same reasons. And how can I just walk down the street and pocket the money, and I just didn't know how I would do that. So what do you do? So I wanted to put my money in something that would be good, and I, it just gnawed at me everywhere I went. I would just see more want in the world. And finally, I'm in the back of a Bentley limousine in Singapore, looking at day laborers through the window, and I've, I've had enough. I don't know what I'm gonna do. So I promised I'd take, I cleared about 20 grand was all the income I made from all of the, the luxury travel. And that was more than half of my income for the year. I'm not a, a money guy. Um, so I, okay, I'm gonna take that 20, 20 grand, I'm gonna do something with it, I don't know what. And there's a website called Kiva where anybody can invest in micro loans all over the world. So I decided that I would take that 20 grand and I would invest it in people with their businesses all over the world and maybe try to help a little bit from the ground up. After all, that guy that you saw in Dubai wouldn't have had that job if the local economy had been stronger where he was from, you know? So if you, if you help the villages, then people don't wind up in that situation. Um, but that's a real sign, by the way, that's coming out of Gatwick Airport in London uh, as you leave the rental car desk. And uh, sure enough, the guy in the black car pulled over and start, started spending more time with his family. So, uh, <laughs> right there. Anyway, so now I want to just show you some of the clients that I met, just a handful, uh, as I got to travel to tons of places. Um, and just tell you a little bit about what I learned, and because it all plays into exactly what Wibbick does here in Milwaukee. It's all the same stuff. Um, this beautiful woman is named Nari. And now, I'm not gonna tell you right, you can't tell where she is in the world, right? You just see, look at her face. You know her right now. I mean, you have a sense of who this human being is. If she steps in next to you into the elevator, your day gets better, right? Now, she, she's really smart, she's like hardworking. She could do anything. She didn't win the birth lottery. So she's in Cambodia, and that, that tin behind her is her house. She works uh, uh, several jobs. The main one is a microfinanced uh, little kiosk where she uh, sells stuff at the side of the road to people going to work. It's pretty much the same stuff that you'd get in the, you know, the, like the gas station, you know, if you're picking up sundries there. And it's a small little business, but she's got two of them, and her husband's got two of them. It's all microfinanced. And there was a, as a result, they're saving, and they're building, and eventually they're going to be able to afford to have a family. So simply having a family is being made possible by just the presence of finance for what this woman's willing to do, the amount of work she's doing. This is in uh, uh, Bosnia, which, as you may know, this is a woman named Zorka, who uh, was incredibly like my mom, uh, by which I mean guilt. Um, she, uh, uh, Within like five seconds, she like wanted to know if I'd called my own mom and how long it had been. Uh, so, and I, she's an adorable woman. Um, she was actually one of the very first people I went to. And uh, I was sitting on her, uh, uh, her front porch. And everybody I met uh, when I first got to Bosnia were all Bosnian Muslims around Sarajevo. Really sweet, wonderful people, had a wonderful time with them. And so I'd gotten used to everybody being Muslim. Now, if you're familiar with the wars in Bosnia, uh, it was not that long ago that Bosnian Muslims, uh, Eastern Orthodox Serbs, Croatian Catholics, were killing each other, massacres. There was you know, genocide. There was terrible things happened. Um, in living memory of everybody sitting on that porch, the people from the microfinance institution, Zorka, her family, the translator, everybody knows this. Everybody knows this history. And we're all sitting around. And I ask a question. Um, Zorka is involved in, uh, uh, she has a, a pork wholesaling thing. She buys pork in quantity and sells it. And uh, I presumed that she was a Muslim because the pork thing didn't go right in. And uh, so in my questioning, everybody else I'd bet had been a Muslim. And she turns out she's a, a Catholic Croatian. And my translator explained to me, no, no, she's, she's not a Muslim. Oh, but you're all getting along so well. 
Well, yeah, they see each other as business partners. They see each other as people building a community together. And so even in a place where people have literally been killing each other, microfinance has this neat little effect of it's not solving everything, but it is helping people knit together a community. Microfinance actually can build communities. Because as soon as you start seeing, somebody in Bosnia told me, money has no religion. And I thought that was really cynical when I first heard it. But I started to understand, no, what they meant was we start seeing each other as equals and partners and people were working together and you have a greater sense of community. Uh, this is in Kenya. Uh, that cow is microfinanced. Um, if you were a cab driver and you needed to finance a cab, you'd get a car loan, right? Well, in East Africa, they're microfinancing, uh, they're, they're basically asset financing livestock. Um, they bring in a kind of cow that produces more milk than the average African cow. And after the first year, selling the extra milk, the loan is paid off. The farmer owns the cow free and clear and produces extra milk for the rest of the, the cow's life. Uh, and that money can be used to educate the kids, build the house, continue to uh, grow things however they want to. And this is actually building genuine wealth. People get one cow, hey, this works. They get two cows, they get a shed, they get more cows. It's great. Um, and so that's a wonderful guy named Simon, his wife Jen, showing me their cow, Grace, who did not hold still uh, for very long. Uh, so it's building economies when you get to Kenya. This is in Rwanda, which was the site of, I think, one of the worst things that ever happened in human history. If you're not familiar, about 20 years ago, Rwanda had an in, just an insanely brutal genocide. Uh, at least 800,000 people were killed, mostly with machetes, in uh, a country with a population about the size of New Jersey. Um, and now it's 20 years later, people are rebuilding. And this lovely woman, who I call Jacqueline in the book, those are her three children, her husband's not around anymore. And so she, as a single mom with three children, uh, about a year and a half before this photo was taken, was living in essentially a shack. Uh, unpowered, you know, unsecure, it rained, they got wet, and she's raising three kids and she's got not a lot of education and no real skills. But the local microfinance institution was willing to take a chance on her. And what some of her neighbors did was they taught her how to go to a market at some distance, hike over there, buy basic commodities in bulk, she, potatoes and rice and other grains, buy them up in bulk, bring them and sell them in smaller quantities at profit, which is essentially the 7-Eleven business model. And so she sort of set up the neighborhood convenience store in her neighborhood. And by the way, what do convenience stores sell? They sell convenience. I mean, we pay three times what that loaf of bread is worth because we, it's worth our time because we have more productive things to do. You bring a store like that into a neighborhood, it actually makes everyone else, it gives them the opportunity to allocate their time more effectively. It's actually pretty important. And so a year and a half later, that nice building behind her is her home and that front room is used as her store. And you can see some of the cooking oil and some of the other produce back there. And her three kids, you see, the, the two of them in front are smiling. They're gonna go to school soon. Uh, the back room is a nice, dry, warm place where they can sleep safely at night. This woman, and now as you look at her, I bet you're not seeing an African or a Rwandan, or you're just seeing a mom, someone trying to make their kids' lives better. And thanks simply to the presence of microfinance, she is. And that's happening everywhere in this world. And by the way, the company, the, the, the microfinance institution that took a chance on her, that gave her the loan, and kids all over Rwanda are benefiting from it. There's these big banks all over Rwanda that are coming in and, man, I would be intimidated to walk into that bank, right? That is a big international scary bank. And then there's the, the kind of the local bank, or Wago Opportunity, and you can walk in there and, and the first thing they do is they put you through three months of education. And not just in how to work your business, but they give health education. They give uh, all sorts of education, like HIV prevention, everything that's needed. And micro lenders all over the world, not all of them, but a large number of them, provide all sorts of other support services. They're there to help the businesses grow all the way along. And so when I'm hearing these stories up here on the stage all day, I'm sitting here and it's stories that I'm here, I've heard replicated all over the world. Wibbick is part of an amazing thing. And anybody here who's thinking you might want to add a zero, do it. Do it. Anyway, um, so kids like this and kids all over the world get a better chance. So in just meeting these few clients, we've seen microfinance, building new business, building community, helping to grow local economies, creating jobs, uh, incentivizing business education. People are growing. It makes the effect sustainable because they stay with them. The businesses stay in business. And then that has generational effects that go on and on and on. Now, I don't think I actually did anything here. I just went around and watched other people doing stuff. But for me, the question of can one person change the world has a clear answer, yes. 
For those who aren't familiar, this is Mohammed Yunus. He's the Nobel Peace Prize winner who uh, founded the Grameen Bank in, in Bangladesh and was one of the pioneers of getting this whole uh, notion started. But if you want to change the world, it's not just like famous people who do this sort of thing. You know, there's people out there changing the world every single day. You just look around and we're all doing it. It's a question of how we change it and what we decide to change it to. The last thing I want to share with you is something I heard in Lebanon, which was not a place I figured I would learn something important. Like, I was scared to go. I didn't know that I would have my heart touched the way that it was there. I want to share with you, before I leave the stage, the five most important words I ever heard in my entire life. Uh, if, you wanted to, if you don't get a chance to read my book, this is what the book is about, really. Um, the details of microfinance are going to change. Everywhere in the world, all the time, technology changes. The details of how we live our lives change. But the five words I'm about to share with you, the most important thing I ever have to share with anybody. I'm in Lebanon, I meet a guy who uh, had his life blown up. He's not a political guy, he couldn't care less. He had a restaurant for 18 years, would serve anybody who came into his, his place. He didn't care if you were a Sunni, Shiite, a Westerner, anybody who came in, he didn't care, he'd serve you, he was fine. And then Hezbollah launches a couple rockets into Israel in 2006, Israel launches a couple rockets back, one of them hits his restaurant. His life was blown up, he lost everything. His family was okay, thank God. I asked him if he was angry. Now, I'm walking around the world and I'm seeing people who've gone through things that would break my soul. And I just had to ask, are you angry? How do you deal with this? And he looked at me like I was a child. And he struggled a little bit because he didn't have good English, so he had to speak very plainly. And he said to me, as long as I have my God, I, I don't worry for something like this. Then he stumbles for words and he says, you love more, you win. You don't stop, thanks for God. You love more, you win. And then I saw him struggle a little bit. And this wasn't some aphorism that he learned in some Berkeley philosophy class. This wasn't something that, this guy had his house blown up. And this was a choice he was making every single day. And so when we support microfinance, when we put our resources, we put our hearts into this, when you love more, you win. And thanks for coming, I appreciate it. That's all I got. I'm sure that I speak for everyone here in thanking Bob very much for your message of inspiration and the power of one in making a positive difference in a proactive way. If you didn't get a chance prior to this luncheon program, I really encourage you to visit our clients' booths and also to stop by and meet Bob and purchase a copy of his book, The International Bank of Bob. A portion of the sales from today will go back to Wibbick to continue to add a zero. And now we have reached the conclusion of today's luncheon. We truly enjoyed having the opportunity to spend time with all of you today, and thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing you again next year as Wibbick continues putting more dreams to work throughout Wisconsin. Thank you.